Hey, people. The Apollo-era lunar rover continues to amaze people. A car on the moon? How crazy is that? And it's big. It's a two-people electric off-road vehicle. How did they really get it there? Now, I've continued to be fascinated by the lunar rover for years. And recently, I found some amazing new unseen footage of its history, its testing, its deployment, and some amazing pictures of it on the moon. So today, lunar rover update. The electric vehicle on the moon. This is what actually came first before the lunar rover. This six-wheel electric test vehicle made by General Motors under contract to NASA. But NASA wanted something bigger. They wanted this. The Mobile Geological Laboratory. But... It weighed too much and would need a second Saturn rocket to get it to the moon, so the program was cancelled. The only way to proceed was to fit a car inside the Grumman Lunar Lander. So GM engineers using their kids G.I. Joe made this mock-up model, which they demonstrated to Werner von Braun, who bought the idea. Amazingly, GM actually made this car themselves. It's actually part of the GM car lineup, although you can't buy it in a GM dealership. Their biggest nightmare was making it compliant to NASA. GM engineers figured out that at a 60 degree slope, it would simulate the low gravity on the moon. It all worked and on Apollo 15, the first lunar rover popped out. What a piece of engineering triumph. But unfortunately, the steering system didn't quite work. And on its first test drive, only the rear wheels could be steered. Here's John Young playing with the first ever two-seat lunar electric car. When the steering system thawed out, it worked great. The only problem that they ever had was one of the fenders, the mud guards broke, and they had to replace it with a piece of plastic that the astronauts had from their map book to stop dust flying up and contaminating their white spacesuits. Well, let's go back in time and look at how it really started. It all began with this amazingly famous speech. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Of course, J.F. Kennedy. And with his NASA advisor, Werner von Braun, they came up with the idea that men didn't just want to walk on the moon, they wanted to drive on the moon. Various lunar rover ideas were put forward, most of them looking like old tractors. some looking more like science fiction. But there was a tiny problem. The lunar rover had to weigh no more than 500 pounds and fit in this triangular space underneath the lunar lander. The space is 5 foot long, 5 foot high and 5 foot deep. General Motors came up with a plan, so they built a model using G.I. Joe to drive it.
The only way they were going to fit the lunar lander into that incredibly tight space was if it folded up. But unfolding it was a different problem. At first, things didn't go so well. Eventually they cracked it, and the finished lunar lander was delivered to NASA. Here's some rare footage of it being prepared for launch. July 1971, Apollo 15 blastoff. The astronauts got out, and their job was to deploy the lunar rover. must have been a tense time at NASA's Houston Mission Control. Especially for Grumman, who built the Lunar Lander, and General Motors, who built the Lunar Rover. It all went well, and the Rover came popping out. Unfortunately, on Apollo 15, the front steering system didn't work. But as the vehicle had front and rear steering, they managed to drive around. In three missions, with three different rovers, they covered over 56 miles on the moon. But the rover had one final trick. It was fitted with a TV camera. They wanted to see the lunar lander take off. There's a delay sending a signal from the Earth to the moon. They had to press tilt up and zoom out before it actually took off. By the time the signal reached the moon, the craft had blasted off and this amazing picture of Apollo 17 beginning its epic journey back to Earth was captured. I really enjoy researching and making these films for you. If this is the type of content you enjoy, please tell YouTube by giving this film a thumbs up. Because of you, the truth is still out there.